go already. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. Well, I'll just start off by saying people love fish, whether they're divers or people out angling or beach combing or perhaps if you're just out in the boat on a sunny day and you see a big grey shape. People love fish. And there are thousands of eyes out there every day looking at fishes and a bit of audience participation. Can anyone tell me what sort of fish that is? Oh, who, 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 who said that? Did you say flathead? Cupid doll. <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> well done. You need, you need us, we need you. So we needed a new citizen science website, one that would bring observations from all those eyes of flathead together, make a really useful online resource, build communities, increase knowledge of our fish fauna, and do some real science that anyone can get involved in. And I believe we've done that and it's called Australasian Fishes. And before you all go, go glassy-eyed because I've just talked about fish and you're not interested in fish, except the flathead woman here, <laughs> um, it's about more than just fish, as you can see, it can take taxa of all kinds of things. So if you are interested in your own backyard, you can set your own project up on your own back backyard and put in whatever you want, and it takes images from, from that source. The website, it's called iNaturalist. Many of you, I'm sure, will be quite aware of it run out of the California Academy of Sciences. And under the website, you have projects. That's mine, Australasian Fishes. And as for projects, there are many of them, many, many projects. If you search on fishes, you get 328 matches. And that's everything from fishes of, you know, Lake Baikal to fishes of Udna Data and fishes of whatever. Um, huge projects, tiny projects, there's all kinds of stuff. Anyone can set up a project. It's free and it's easy. This is the front page of Australasian Fishes. That's the bit at the top you can see there. And that's, you can see the number of observations, number of species covered, number of people. That's over 800 people now. Uh, you can see we've got leaderboards for most people with the most observations. You can see Ralph McGee there has got over 1,900 observations. Ralph is also leading the uh, species count. He's got the most species and the most observed species. Remember, this isn't just about fishes. You can adapt this to whatever else you're, you're dealing with. And I started this project 15 months ago and already it's got over 22,000 observations. So you can see it's really taking up. How do, you, how do you start your own project? Well, firstly, you, you sign up. It's just like creating an email address. It's quick and easy. And then you can start a new project or if you're keen on fish, flathead lady, you can join, the, join this project. You will, won't you? Oh, and the cards are arriving at you. Just a good time. <laughs> Adding observations. You simply press the button. And it's a fourth part process. What did you see? When did you see it? And a bit of a description. You can say things like, you know, this is crap video. This is a crap stool because it was taken off video. The viz was horrible. Or, you know, it was a fish that my daughter caught on hook and line. You can put whatever you want in there. The thing is you say where you were, obviously it's the Google powered thing, you just zoom in, put your, your dot there, you zoom out to give um, the accuracy of your identification, you can, if you know exactly where it was you can put a spot right on that spot. You choose your files and you save, easy peasy. There's another way of doing it from your dashboard where you can add and you can choose files from your computer. So if you go for a dive or you've been out fishing and you've caught a range of different flathead and whatever else. You can upload all those in one go. You can also link your Flickr account and Facebook. <coughs> so there's all kinds of ways to get your stuff in there. And the big question, of course, that lots of people ask uh, when you're dealing with images is copyright. What's the story with copyright? Well, you can set your own copyright for the observation <coughs> itself or for the photograph that you've taken. And you can set all kinds of different photographic levels from no copyright through to um, all rights reserved. Adding comments. This is a typical species observation page, white spotted dragonet, and it's a bit like Facebook except there isn't a like button. I think they should put a like button in there. And you can see there's been a bit of, a bit of activity for this observation, starting with Dave Ferasti who made a comment, then me, somebody else, I jumped back in again. And you can see here with the at symbol, you can actually message people back privately. So if there's something you want to say in your observation, in your comment, you can at message people and you get your own message box. Etc. Et nothing fancy there. Adding identifications. This is a clown Toby. 
and there it's been put in there by Andrew Trevor Jones, who works at the Australian Museum with me. And I've come along, pressed the agree button, and bingo, there's my, ident my identification, so I've agreed with Andrew. <coughs> Adding observations, if you disagree, and the first one thing I might say about this is, you can see that's a pretty crappy looking photo. <laughs> we don't need National Geographic style photos for everything. We can learn a lot from poor photographs. And sometimes you will have a poor photograph if you're diving or you see you're standing on a pier and you <coughs> see a tuna swimming past or something. Sometimes you'll be a, there'll be a poor photograph, but poor photographs can often tell you heaps of stuff. How am I going for time, Paul? Well Excellent. Poor photographs can often tell you lots and lots. I was explaining just a couple of minutes ago about a guy from um, Port Phillip Bay. He's done taken lots and lots of photographs of this particular sort of stingray. And he's, in all these diving, he's found photographs of pregnant females, of neonates, freshly born ones, males and females mating, and we've worked out the timing of the reproductive cycle of the reproductive cycle of this particular ray based on his photos, and some of them are really quite not good. <coughs> so if you disagree with somebody, so this person's put in perch-like fishes, Sasha Schultz has come along and said it's a lizard fish and I've agreed, which marks his record as maverick, and it needs identification. Research grade observations. These are fish um, that you'll recognise, some of them from the South Australian region, white shark, in this case it's been agreed to by a whole bunch of different people and it's marked as research grade. Identifications. The community includes experts. So this guy here put in a Maori coral goby and he said it would be a 700 kilometre range extension. Somebody else is Joe Fish, I like that, has said, no, 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 it's this. And I've commented and said I'll run that past Doug. And Doug is the goby expert, the world goby expert, so I've run it past <coughs> him. He's confirmed that the Mr Fish is right and we've then got the correct identification on it. Mapping. There's the current coverage. It also includes some of the sub-Antarctic islands, which would make the map look a bit funny, so I didn't include those. 22,000 plus observations in there. You see there's a lot of space in the middle of Australia without too really many fish observations. <laughs> wonder why. Mapping. Here's our local, five minutes comes through, here's our local area, Adelaide. If you press the map button, it's too easy. You get 258 observations. That's increasing rapidly as we've got a keen diver on board from uh, the area and he's just going crazy. 103 species so far. If you take those same 258 observations, you can grip, um, do them as a grid. Or, and uh, of course there's some of the iconic South Australian beasties, the white shark and the leafy sea dragon. Or you can just lay it as a, a list. Identification tools, this is where it gets pretty high powered. Computer vision, remember the name kitted on Peloensis. When you get in and you decide you're going to suggest an identification, the minute you click in there, you get, remember, Ketodon Peloensis, you get that. We're pretty sure it's in this genus, Ketodon. Here are our top species suggestions, Peloensis. So the computer system has identified your species for you. It's pretty high-powered stuff. And it does that on visually similar and geolocating um, fish records. Identification tools number two, compare tool. That's a photo I took. Uh, la last year at Ned's Beach on Lord Howe Island. Yes, it was very nice and we're there for field work in the Australian Museum. Thank you. When you press the compare button, you get there's my photo and here are fishes that it could be confused with. Again, this isn't just about fish. Think bigger than that. For me, it's fish, but you can think bigger than that. You get a control uh, panel here that, where you can adjust the place, you can adjust your taxon, even colours. Identification tool, tool number three, the similar species tool. Click similar species, you get unsurprisingly, a list of things that it could be confused with. User groups and partners. Divers, anglers, spearfishers, beachcombers, scientists. At the moment, the divers are the biggest user group. We've got a lot of divers on board. Uh, we've got, I think it's 17 at the moment, different institutions, universities, museums, um, clubs, survey groups, what have you, involved. Red map, we're dealing with closely, thank you. Subscribing, you can subscribe to a taxon or subscribe to a place, which means that land and water management is easy to monitor a region. Biosecurity, you can monitor the pest species and you receive notifications when these things uh, pop up in the project. Conservation status is also mapped from the IUCN, so this is a white shark from Sydney and you can see it's marked as vulnerable. There is a mobile phone app, yep, enough, enough said there. Data downloading, you can download your personal data, anybody's data multiple formats, create a query, for me fish, user, taxon, date range if you want, 
hit the button and that's it, you're done. Journal, I write a journal or a blog every week, or I try to, with all kinds of different, I hope, interesting information. <coughs> last, last week's journal was on manta malady. And you can see a fish hook embedded in the upper jaw of this manta, telling you about the fishing line trailing stuff causing damage to the manta. And that generated a huge number of comments and information, thank you, uh, about where they're bycatch, um, how long it takes a hook to corrode, um, a whole range of stuff. We've made lots of discoveries over the last year, 34 range extensions and a couple of new species potentially. More than 140 discoveries. I'm running out of time so you can read these. New colour forms, new record of that thing, huge range extension for that, and a deep sea lanternfish being fed to a chick on Lord Howe Island. That's bizarre. What did it cost? Financial and time. <coughs> Financial, it's free to set up, free to maintain. Free, notice that's free. Oh, we haven't got the time yet. And uh, there's less than $1,500 I spent on some coding to develop a banner and uh, the supporters are time. It takes me about an hour or more a day, largely on my own time. And that's managing, identifying and commenting and giving presentations like this one. Ah, oh, one minute plans. I want to en enhance tagging so that people can actually do things like, say, a fish with these characteristics from New South Wales in February is that particular sort of fish. Plans, community building. I want to build both public and researcher communities. At the moment there are 808 observers and 466 identifiers and that's going up all the time. And I was recently asked how to cite the site for references in a scientific paper so we're getting traction in the scientific community as well. The ultimate aims is build and strengthen communities, get meaningful outcomes for all the st stakeholder groups. And I'd like, I spend a lot of time on it, I'm definitely the champion of the project, but a lot of other keen people, I'd like to be able to step back slightly so that I spend less time behind the computer and more time doing that. Thank you. <laughs>